Hey, guys. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our God reigns, man. King of kings, Lord of lords. Amen. Just talking with Sean a little bit. He's going through some good codes and hearing from the Lord, meditating with the Lord, contemplating. Praise God. I pray that you, I, I pray that every walking minute, working minute, breathing moment, you're with the Lord, you're walking with Him, and you're on pace with Him, and He's your everything. You know, we mentioned this morning in our Bible study that God gave us time as a gift, the most beautiful, precious thing. And people use that as the excuse for not being able to spend time with God because they don't have enough of that gift that he gave them. Time, you better rethink all of that. God gave you time so you'd spend it all with him. And he knows how much of the 24 hours each day you do spend with him. Amen. And I'm encouraging you to do that with joy and don't use time as an excuse for not being able to spend it with him. What a beautiful gift. Hey Amen. I love y'all. I uh, pray you're doing well. I pray you're in good health. I pray you're finding the favor of the Lord through his word. You're believing what he said about you. You're believing what he said about himself. Hallelujah. What he said about his bride. Believe the Lord. Believe what he's saying. Sean and I were just talking to, there is a whole bunch of Christians out there, pastors, people, online teachers, you know, who don't believe that God spanks his kids when Paul teaches that he does. And he only spanks his kids. If you're not getting spanked, it's because you're not his kid. And he tells us about it. He says, man, and none of us like you being spanked, but the result of being spanked will, uh, you know, change us and help us for the better, for his glory, for eternity's sake. Hey, Vondo's here. He's putting up all the links. Be sure to uh, subscribe to Sean's pages. Be sure ridiculous. Discipline is love. Amen. Every parent does. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? Now, when the Holy Spirit comes in in power, he's going to start correcting you the more you mature. Okay? Uh, make sure you give to Sean. Support God's men. Support. Guys, man, I'm telling you, if you could see, if you could see, if you could see what God sees, and he's invited you to, through the plain text and the coded text, see what he sees. Don't don't fall for what the devil's trying to show you. Hey, looky over there. Oh, over here's a shiny. Oh, hey, wait, over here. Focus on the Lord. We set our affections on him, the things above, and not on the things of the earth. Focus, affections, the target, the start line, the finish line. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. We all have to do that, guys. If you're going to have that eternal blessing that you desire, amen, uh, we're all going to have the eternal blessing. That's what Sean and I were just talking about. These guys who preach salvation by grace through faith, they're afraid to preach the pre-trib rapture, and it's the same gift. If you get saved by grace, the rapture comes along with it, man. Yes, John 15 says he cuts off the branches that don't produce fruit so that we can grow properly. Loving parents discipline like God does for us. Amen. Cush, can you please explain what Paul meant? Work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. If our salvation is guaranteed. Uh, I understand Paul is talking about our inheritance, but fear and trembling is for the tribulation saints. Uh, well, we work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. We learn to fear the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Okay? And if we really recognize his awesomeness, his creative power, his destructive power, his judgment power, uh, Paul said that concerning the uh, judgment seat of Christ. Knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men to walk with the Lord to humble yourself to the Lord, because the Lord is a terrible God. He's a terror. 
And we must, in our humility, understand that, that he has the power to destroy us, but he chose to love us and to keep us in that. So there's that great, wonderful balance of knowing, of having the guarantee that our salvation is secure in Jesus Christ. But then he says, he tells us, make make your calling and your election sure. Okay? You're one-on-one with God. Not general Christianity. Hey, look, I'm Christian. I'm the body of Christ. Uh, which part of that body are you? Do you know? Do you know? If, are you the toe? Are you the ear? Are you the kneecap? Are you the buttocks? What are you? Okay. And, and so we walk with the Lord. We work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. And that's not talking about justification salvation. That's talking about your sanctification salvation, the inheritance, the rewards. Okay. Work out your own salvation. Make sure you are walking in obedience. Oh, Vondo, I'm going to hit this. I, I hope I don't dread it. Uh, one of the many verses, Ecclesiastes, the Lord is terrible. And a very uh, your reference is off there a little bit. Vondo, you hit a typo. Uh, one of many verses, the Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous is his power. He is. And we've got to understand our God as that God, a terrible, awesome, mighty God. That's what Sean and I were just discussing as well. People have lost that. Just because we got saved and now God's not angry anymore. Because, you know, he's not the same yesterday, today, and forever. Or is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? And his terror is going to be incredible during this great wrath, during this tribulation. What he does at the very start of it all with America, uh, Sean's found more codes on America in New York. He's going to be sharing with us soon. Just what he's about to do with America, guys, based on codes we've seen from four years ago and others, it's going to be absolute devastation. The tsunami bombs, the destruction, the weeping and wailing, the crying, the burning of all everybody's homes. The survivors. These are the survivors who are going to be homeless. And meanwhile, they're getting their phone calls from their uh, mortgage companies saying, hey, we want to refinance. If you'll give us three grand down... Closing cost, five grand, whatever it is, 10 grand closing cost will make your payments smaller. And they know your house is about to be ripped off the planet and destroyed. Okay. Uh, Heather says, fear and trembling, ultimate obedience and reverence, respect for his power, his, his today, yesterday, and forever power. If the church feared God with fear and trembling, knowing how very merciful he is every second of our lives, They would have nothing to do with this wicked world. Amen. Uh, And it relates to chastisement. It relates to chastisement because God chastens his own because he wants you having all the prizes. Now, he's not here to beat you down. Uh, His Holy Spirit, sweet, sweet Holy Spirit, convicts us of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And we sin. We're prone to sin. That's We are prone to sin. We're not prone to righteousness. We are going to sin before we are going to commit acts of righteousness. That's why we need God to say, hey, will you change my proneness? Will you change my mind? Will you change my ways? Well, when we sin, the Holy Spirit will convict us. And we say, Lord, yeah, help help me with that. Help me with that. Help me with that. And the chastisement comes when we refuse to listen to the Holy Spirit. A parent. I mean, good night. Parents want their kids to do the right thing for the kid's sake. Okay? For their adulthood Parents, a good parent doesn't raise their kids to be good kids. They raise them to be good parents. Okay? And so you have to look to a future end goal while you're disciplining now. And Jesus has that end goal in mind. He he sees the judgment seat of Christ. He knows what he wants to offer you. He knows what he wants to give you. And the Christian church is over here just playing and not fearing the Lord. They're not working out their salvation at all. All the, all they know is that I'm justified before the Lord. And he, when he justified me, sanctified me, and glorified me, and boom. And then they sit down. And God has called us to the next step after. That's fine. You're going to heaven. 
Okay, you're going to heaven. You're going to miss out on your crowns. You're going to miss out on a lot of your inheritance. Okay, and guys, I, I think that really, really means the more I study and think about it is millennial during the millennium time. Okay, we, we have our eternal inheritance in Christ. What is his is ours. But that's remember, we're a heavenly people. What if some people uh, just God decides they're not going to come to back to earth for that thousand years? Because it's an earthly kingdom. And everybody who's saved is part of the heavenly kingdom. So they still, it's a win-win, but they'll miss out on their rewards, on their assignments, on their leadership. Because they have misproperly judged here, and they didn't rule their own souls here, and they loved the devil's world here. They might be missing Jesus' world for the first thousand years. I don't know. There's going to be inheritance lost. It's obvious. Why is there a judgment seat of Christ? And why will there be shame there? Because people didn't care about their sanctification unto glorification. They didn't work out their salvation with fear and trembling. They were so glad they were saved and they got that free gift. Now I get to live hellish. And guys, after receiving that free gift of salvation, you get to live hellish if you wish. It's a free will. God has called you differently than that. He told you to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Okay. Heather says that that sounds quite possible and reasonable for rewards. Right. You're, you're in heaven. Okay. The kingdom of heaven. You get to go to heaven. You're glorified in heaven. Okay. But there's going to be reward that this group, this large. Why is Satan working so hard for you to lose this reward? Well, why does he, why does he even deal with Christians after you're saved? He lost them. You're on your way to heaven. He'll never get your soul back. Why does he keep messing with you? Because he knows something we don't. And the stuff that we do know, we need to be doing it. Loving the Lord back, working the field. He, now, the very next step your discipler should have told you after you were saved should have given you the wonderful free grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Free gift, it's for, for by his grace, his gifting that you've been saved through faith. It has nothing to do with yourself. It's the gift of God. It's not of your works, lest you boast about it. He did all the work, will you believe? His death, burial, and resurrection, he replaced you. You were supposed to go there. It should have been your name at the top of the cross. And your name was taken off and they placed Jesus of Nazareth up there instead. King of the Jews. He took your place. He took your cross. Now, will you believe that? If you'll believe that story, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you'll be saved. Now your discipler says, okay, are you ready? Are you ready to please the Lord? Are you ready to walk in his ways? He did so much for you. Are you ready to do some stuff for him? Not everything. He doesn't want you to save the world because you can't. That was his job. He saved the world. He wants you to just run your race in your lane. Run with patience. Run looking unto Jesus. You ready? Okay. Now, we're going to enter an era, a phase called discipleship. In discipleship, you deny yourself, you pick up your cross, and you follow Jesus. And most of the church is not even doing that. They refuse to deny themselves. Now, there's going to be something in that for having to refuse to deny yourself because that's Satanism. Satanism is all about self. Self, 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 me, 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 I, 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 I. Satan's five I wills in Isaiah 14. I will, I will, I will, I will. And that's many of the Christians today who've chosen not to be disciples of the Lord. They want to be saved by the Lord, but they don't want to be disciples and they surely don't want to talk about Jesus coming right away because they want to enjoy this world. They're earth dwellers. Now, I don't know how God's going to deal with that. That's why there's a judgment seat of Christ, and he's the righteous judge, and he's going to deal with it. And he's going to deal with it, and he'll deal with it wonderfully. But we know, even in the Bible codes, it says there's going to be shame at the judgment seat of Christ. There will be shame. Guys, we don't want anybody in this Bible study experiencing shame. We want you to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. This was a very good question, Kush. Okay? And it has nothing to do with 
your eternal placement. That was done in Jesus Christ. When you believed, you're going to heaven. The Holy Spirit has come in, he sealed himself in, and you are going to heaven. Now, ask yourself this. Am I a disciple? Am I an honest disciple? Am I a holy disciple? Am I a faithful disciple? Have I denied myself or is there too much of me left? The Bible says if a man judges himself here on earth, according to scriptures, he won't have to be judged by the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ. If we judge ourselves, we shall not be judged. Amen? Judge yourself. Are you a disciple, Christian? Hey, justified one, are you walking in your sanctification, in your holiness, in your self-denial, in your picking up the cross? Have you done that? Not every Christian, and matter of fact, most Christians won't do that, but you're commanded to do that. You're just a disobedient child. And whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Be times over and over till the correction's made. Does that help you, Cush? I hope that helps you. He says the lost always use that verse. Which verse, bub? The, the one you that you initially started out with? Yeah, the lost do, guys. They, they, they misuse every verse. Uh, we got pastors on YouTube who misuse every verse they speak. Okay? And uh, so we don't want to be doing that. I don't know what's going on with my angle of this thing, man. My picture behind me is not crooked, guys. Okay? Something with my angle of my phone does that. All right. The lost always use that verse. Yes. Okay. Good. Praise the Lord, guys. Hey, you guys want to look at some old codes, some powerful codes? Let's see where we start tonight. Oh, here's one about New York being destroyed. You want to start there? Want to know why? First Corinthians 11 31. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. Judge yourself, guys, according to righteousness, according to the word, according to the Bible code. You're going to stand and give an account for every second of your life after salvation. Okay? We're going to do it. God loves numbers. He loves the clickety-clack. He loves time, the gift that he gave you. And he knows, he knows, and you should know, that if you'll take all that time and love him with it and do, do your heavenly calling here on earth, it'll be well worth it for eternity. The little short, short time that you have obeyed, you've walked faithfully in sanctification, you're going to heaven whether you walk in sanctification or not. You're sanctified whether you walk in sanctification or not if you're saved. But there's going to be a greater blessing to those who walked in that sanctification and who worked out their own salvation. That's What is salvation? Remember, it comes in three phases. It's talking about sanctification. Work out your period between the time that you were saved and the time you're glorified. Work that out with the Lord. Lord, what is your will? What is your calling? What would you have me do? I want to read these verses. I want to hear from your, your voice, Lord. I want to walk with you faithfully. None of this is forced. None of this is coerced. None of this, oh, I, I've got to work really hard so, so I can get gifts. You'll never get gifts working hard. Jesus said he's going to give you gifts if you seek him. Right? He's a rewarder of all those who diligently seek him. Seek Him. Walk with Him. Love Him. That's what sanctification is. Justification is He loved me and I believed it. I believed every bit of it. Oh, He loved me. The sanctification is now I love you, Lord. Work that out with fear and trembling. Lord, I just only want to do your will. I don't want to do my own thing. I don't want to call it God's will when it's not your will. I, I, I want to know your will. I want to do your heart. If I'm the toe, Lord, let me be good with being the toe. Amen. How many of you are thankful for your toes? So don't be grumbling if you're a toe. I love my toes. Toes are awesome. All right. Hey, let's look at this code. This is from, oh man, let's see here. The date is January 24, 2019. Four years ago and three months. I do it every day. Amen. And Cheryl, what is that? Is that walk before the Lord? Being before the Lord, seeking His will? Amen. Yeah, we do it every day, guys. It's a daily, daily process. Amen. All right, let's look at this. Uh, Vondo's got it up. Up on who is the blood? New York City. 
Upon who is the blood? Who's responsible for all this innocent blood around the world that's been killed for years and years and years at the hands of Babylon, the whore? All these little babies murdered? Innocent blood? Who's going to be guilty of that? New York City, says God. They're number one in my book. They go first. Sean's commentary says, who has innocent blood on their hands? In this case, it's New York City. From all the abortions, obviously the wrath of God isn't limited to one city, but the entire nation. And world, the entire nation and the world for this abomination. New York City is going to be buried forever. Did you hear all this? This was four years ago before we knew it was going to be buried in water. Okay. We knew it was going to be buried in water. We, we didn't know how it was going to be buried in water. Now we have all the details. You know, progressive revelation. Fondo says that this particular code is on page 502. Amen. So we're looking at that code from January 24th, 2019, about God destroying New York City because of all the abortions and the innocent blood. Not just New York City, but the entire nation and the world. Okay. There's a lot of cities in the United States who have sh shed tons of innocent blood. Obviously, the wrath of God, this is still Sean's commentary, the wrath of God isn't limited to one city, but the entire nation and world for this abomination. New York City is going to be buried forever. The wrath of God is coming with a vengeance. The wrath of God is coming with a vengeance, guys. Believe this. Here's the code. Upon who is the blood? New York! Exclamation point. God's answer, New York. You will see the repercussions. 50 years, guys. January, this past January, was five zero years, a jubilee. And for us to still be living is just mercy on top of that. 50 plus years we've legally slaughtered his babies, man, in the womb. The safest place he, he came up with, his ingenious, wonderful, awesome plan to protect the gestation period of a baby inside the mommy's belly, the safest place on earth, and we go right up inside the womb and rip that baby out. Uh, right after we've cut it up in a bunch of pieces and its nerve endings are just as alive as yours are and it suffers the most incredible pain while it's bleeding to death before they suck it out with a vacuum system. Yeah, God's cool with that. God's love. Upon who's the blood? New York. You will see the repercussions, the abortion of the fetus in her, the children, the wrath of the Lord to destroy New York completely, completely. All five boroughs, man. And your holocaust, your disaster, the murderer shall be put to death. It's all you lawmakers. You're the murderer. All you doctors, you're the murderers. All you women and fellas that work in the abortion clinics, you're the murderers. All you people who go out and scream in the streets, I want my rights. I want to be able to slaughter my child in my womb. I have that right. I'm a woman. I have free choice. Uh, God's going to put you to death because he's sick of you. He hates you. He hates your sin. He hates what you've done in your abominations to his little ones. Joel 2.31, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and terrible, terrible day of the Lord, because God's terrible. Bundle says it's not limited to physical abortion. The GMOs, the RXs cause miscarriages too. Hello, bro. Mm -hmm. The abortion pills, girls don't have to go to the abortion clinic no more. Just take that morning after pill and just slaughter all the babies. God will have vengeance for all his babies. They are all his children. God's biggest blessing is a little child. Hello. That was from Heather. That's the truth. Numbers 3530. Whoso killeth any person, the murderer shall be put to death by mouth of witnesses. But one witness shall not testify against any person to cause them to die. There's witness after witness after witness. You got your doctor and his assistant. Every one of... Those abortions have a witness, plus the mama. The murderer is mommy. Hey, ladies, if you've ever had an abortion, Jesus can save you from that too. And make it as though, on your record, as though you never had one. 
He'll forgive you. He forgave Paul the murderer. He forgives sin. It's already been taken care of. Your issue now is a righteousness issue. If you'll believe that Jesus died for that sin, your sin of abortion, doctors, nurses, your sin of committing all these abortions, you can be saved. The Lord's wrath will be turned against you because it was already placed, rifled out on Jesus Christ. Your sin has been taken care of. Now, Jesus commands you. He's looking at you in the eyes, and he says, the issue now is righteousness. You must believe that I died for you. You must believe that my son took your terror, your wrath, your death upon himself for the sins that you committed. Will you believe this? Believe in his death, burial, and resurrection? That your sin issue has been taken care of. And if you'll believe in that, I'll infuse my righteousness into you, God says. And the righteousness issue will be taken care of too. And you'll be saved. Whosoever believeth in him, Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. You shall not go to hell anymore. That was your target. That's where your GPS was directing you. Your whole life because of your sinfulness. Because of your lack of God's righteousness infused into you. And the requirement is that God's righteousness be infused into you for you to go to heaven. And the way that happens is when you believe that he died for you, that the sin issue was taken care of at Calvary. Will you please believe today? All right. Let, let's read that code interpretation. We'll go to the next one. Upon who is the blood? New York. You will see repercussion. The abortion of the fetus in her, the children. The wrath of the Lord to destroy New York completely. This is four years ago in three months. To destroy New York City completely. New York, the state, the United States. Your Holocaust disaster. The murderer shall be put to death. Abortion is murder, folks. God said so. Go with God. You're going to go with God at the judgment when he throws you live into the eternal lake of fire. Because what God says goes, man. He gives life. Don't you dare take it. All right, this one's from January 31st. This also is about abortion. So make sure I didn't skip one there, Vondo. Went from the 24th to the 31st. January 31st, 2019. What's important about January? That's when Roe v. Wade was made legal. Mm-hmm. Roe v. Wade. 73 to 23 was 50 years in January. We're on borrowed time, America. God has blessed you with a couple extra months. And just around the time of his rapture, he's going to destroy the United States of America in such devastating proportions, it's going to leave the world aghast. They're going to be freaked out. Those who survived it in the United States of America will be totally, totally, totally freaked out, blown away, horrified, terrified. Fano says, this one's not in the book. It, it's wonderful to be able to review it live. So praise God. Here we go. Sean's interpretation from four years and three months ago. This is, behold a horror, the iniquity of the abortion. The interpretation of this code is very clear. God is going to pour out his wrath against the USA and it will be destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah for all these abominations, namely the pride and the shedding of innocent blood by abortion. If you look closely, you will see the words, thus the USA and abortion intertwined through the question in Deuteronomy 29:24. Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this land? What meaneth the heat of his great anger? And entwined in that is, thus the USA and abortion. This is the answer. This is the answer. Proverbs. Oh man, my cursor. Proverbs 16, 16 to 19. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Hmm. That's America. And just look at America, the nation, and Obama, the Antichrist. You'll see all seven in America and the Pharaoh, the American Pharaoh, who will be soon the Assyrian world ruler, Gog, the man of sin. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, 
feet that are swift are running to mischief, a false witness that bears and speaks lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Every one of you talking about Sean and myself and these Bible codes, and you're murmuring among your own people, I just, God hates that with a passion. Don't you dare sow discord among the brethren about God's men. Don't you dare do it. Another warning that a whipping is a coming. The woodshed will be your house for a while. We don't want that for you. We want you to be humble. We want you to obey God and understand that he hates discord among the brethren as much as he hates abortion in New York City and the rest of the world. Same wickedness. These seven things that he hate. And, you know, he started out with six and said, oh, wait, seven, and included discord among the brethren. Guys, you better have harmony in the Lord Jesus Christ. You better have harmony in the plain text and the coded text because you'll have harmony with God then. Alicia says, I have relatives who are pro-choice and claim to be Christian. They're all over the place, man. You're right. Let's look at the code interpretation. This is God's word from heaven talking about the horror, the iniquity, abortion, how God hates it. Here's, here's what the question is. Hey, where'd the child go? Where's the fetus? There was a fetus in that woman's belly not long ago. Where is the fetus? Abortion. Behold a horror, the iniquity of the abortion. Every time God sees an abortion, it's horrifying to him because he sees every one of them. It's worse than a horror flick because you know that's makeup and action. This is all real and God sees every bit of it and it's horrifying to him to watch his little baby slaughtered. You ever seen an abortion? Well, you need to. You need to find you a video that shows you an abortion and what's happening. You need to find a video that also describes what's happening to the baby on the inside. You pro-choice folk. You lazy Christians need to see that and understand why God is enraged. Where'd that fetus go? Abortion. Behold a horror, the iniquity of the abortion. Thus a cult of death. We have hollered out. We have hollered out the death cult. The homosexual death cult. That was the Nazi party. And they came here in 1947. About the same time, you know, the Roswell incident was going on. And the great deception just kicked itself up tons of notches through these liars, through this cult of death. And abortion was their number one rule. Get abortion going. And it was in the back alleys. It was illegal, but it was taking place all the time. Then they legalized it. And Satan knew that that would bring the curse to this place. But God's so merciful, he allowed it 40 years and then 50 years, and now 50 years and, you know, four months. The Lord hates the horror of the innocent blood of death. He hates it. You must hate what he hates. He hates the horror of this. And it needs to be a horror to you and not out of your mind, out of, out of sight, out of mind. Oh, I'm going to live my best life now. I'm going to, you know, do my bucket list. For, forget the horrors that God sees. Guys, when you and I are proper disciples, we say, God, what do you see? Help me see. Help me see what you see and help me to hate what you hate and love what you love. It's a horrifying mess to him. The Lord hates pride. So what? The Lord hates the horror of innocent blood and death. The Lord hates pride. All these curses shall come up on you. Like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, so is the USA. All the nations will ask, why has the Lord done this to this land? Why this great outburst of anger? Abortion. Thus the USA ended up this way. Bono says, I could post one here, but I just can't watch or hear the description. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to do that. That's cool. Go check it out yourself, guys. Go check it out yourself. Um, golly, it's, it's horrifying. It's horrifying. You don't need to see this. It doesn't need to be happening. But God sees every one of them and he's horrified. And he hates the innocent death of the blood cult. He hates pride. 
Oh man, he hates the USA. Deuteronomy 28, 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and shall pursue you and overtake you till you are utterly destroyed. Deuteronomy 29, 23, and 24. And that the whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning, that is not sown nor beareth, nor any grass groweth therein. Like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboam, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath, even all the nations shall, shall say, Wherefore hath the Lord done this unto this land? What meaneth the heat of this great anger? Now you guys remember, in Deuteronomy 27, 28, 29 are the curses of the Lord. And he told Israel, if you will follow Satan, you're going to receive these curses. And half of Israel lives in the United States of America. Half of the whore. Remember, there were two whore wives of God, Ahola and Aholaba. One of them's here in the USA, and she's going to go down first. Those Jews are going to die. And then it's a cause for the others to wake up. The surviving Jews in the United States, I need to get myself to Israel, where God's going to save us at mid-trib. Salvation. Going to fast-track salvation, because these people have, have slaughtered God's babies just way too long, and His mercy requires it. His mercy requires that he comes to the end of his mercy. M mercy is, it's everlasting. It's everlasting. His mercy is everlasting except on earth. That's an eternal everlasting mercy. His mercy, mercy turns to wrath. And we were told that all the way through scripture. That's what we're discussing right here in Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Bible, Jesus's favorite book. You guys know when Satan came to Jesus to tempt him that those 40 days he was fasting, he quoted Deuteronomy. And Jesus answered him from Deuteronomy. And right here in Deuteronomy, he's warning us of the curse. If you break my commandments, you break my law, you come against me, and you do these seven things that I hate, I will destroy you utterly. And Jesus is about to do all of that. Let's look at that code interpretation again. This is God's word. This code is behold a horror, the iniquity of the abortion from January 31st, 2019. Where's the child, the fetus? Abortion. Oh, behold, a horror, the iniquity of the abortion. Thus a cult of death. The Lord hates the horror of the innocent blood and death. The Lord hates pride. All these curses shall come upon you like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. So is the USA. All the nations will ask, why has the Lord done this to this land? Well, why is this great outburst of anger? Abortion. Abortion. Thus the USA was destroyed. Abortion. Oh, it's not that big a deal. Ask God. February 8th. February 8th, 2019. They slept in me. Jehovah is grieving. He will not forget another abortion one. Timely. I don't know why God's got three abortion ones here for us tonight. But they're timely. And you better know why God is going to destroy the USA. And you better not be soft toward abortion. And you better not be soft toward the, the list of seven. You need to hate what God hates. These six things that the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination. A proud look. That belongs to an individual. God hates individuals. He hates groupings of folks. This one here is not in the book. You need to pay attention on tonight's Bible study. Abortion is murder and God is sick of it. Sean says, I found this code searching for Jehovah is grieving. yod heh vav -Heh is grieving. Do you guys understand that? Do you guys understand that he has the deepest of feelings? That's why he made you. This, these should be in the book. I'll add them for the next update. Hallelujah. Glory to God, Sean. Praise the Lord. They need to be there, don't they, buddy? Hallelujah. This is, this is incredible. Sean, he says he was looking for yod heh vav -Heh is grieving. Guys, he's grieving. Don't, don't, be, don't be part of that. Don't be the cause of his grief. 
You are commanded, you are commanded, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of rapture. Do not grieve him, walk with him, obey him. Do not love the seven things he hates or, you know, or be soft toward him. If he hates him, you need to say, Lord God, I'm going to hate him too. And if you don't hate him naturally, you need to pray, Lord God, help me to hate these things and help me not to be a partaker in them. I don't want to have a proud look. I don't want to have a lying tongue. I don't want to have a heart that sheds innocent blood. What did Jesus say? When you hate somebody in your heart, you're a murderer. When you gossip about them, you have assassinated them. You're a sniper from a distance. That person doesn't know you're sniping them, but they end up dead anyway in the eyes of people. Hate what God hates. Sean goes on to say, the word slept here is a euphemism for the word death. So when you see they slept, it means they died. And that's what they were talking about Lazarus. Remember that? The disciples thought Jesus was talking about Lazarus is asleep. And he goes, guys, he's dead. Lazarus is dead. Amen. Lila says, I had two abortions when I was lost and surrounded by demons. Two decisions I regret and have repented of doing. The Lord heard my cries and saved me from my sin. Hallelujah. And those babies are going to be so glad to see mama when you come to heaven. They're going to be so thankful. Mama, there's mama. She's the one that got us here to heaven. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's covered. That's, that's already gone. Hallelujah. God bless you, Lila. Amen. Yeah, those demons cause a lot of us in our past to do an awful lot of stupid stuff. We listen to their voice. They didn't make us do anything. We listened to their voice. We listened to the doctrine of devils. And that's why we come on here every night. We want to bring you the wonderful doctrine of Scripture, the truth of the Bible. Amen, says Vondo. Praise God. What a wonderful testimony, Lila. God loves us. And there's no sin too big that he has not forgiven already. He, he already suffered for all this. Now it's his righteousness. And that's what he sees. And those babies are going to be rejoicing to see all of us because we're talking about them tonight. We're talking about those babies. They have a name, a new name written down in glory. We're going to see them. We talked about them on this side in faith, that they're there. And God loves faith. Without faith, you can't please him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for sharing that with us. All right. Sean goes on to say, this is the wrath of God. The code passes through Leviticus 10, 6, which is describing judgment from the Lord with fire. It also shares a letter with the words nations and children, and passing through USA. Tying it all together, something else is very significant here is that the fact that the name Yeshua is encoded through Lord yod heh vav -Heh, telling us that Jesus is God, man. Hello? Jesus never said he's God, oh, about a million times, and more than that when we get to the Bible room. Jesus is God, folks. You better embrace that or you're going straight to hell. Only God could save you. Only God could take all your sin upon him and suffer for it. Only God could infuse you with his righteousness to get you to God's heaven. Amen. God, 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 Jesus. Okay, here's the code. This is the code from February 8th, 2019. The abortion. They slept, died in me. yod heh vav -Heh is grieving. He will not forget. Iniquity has financed, was financed to do all this great evil for the abortions. Your taxes. They extracted your taxes and killed all our babies with them. And God knows you don't have any control over that. I would encourage you to give to God's men, though, in the process. If you've given to the devil in taxes, give to God's men. Be faithful. God told you to do that. Take care, Sean. Iniquity was financed to do all this great evil for the abortion. And this shall be a sign for you from the Lord, Yeshua. He will pay back with fire to the nations, to the USA, for the abortion of our children. And they will weep over the burning which Jehovah has kindled. That's what we were just describing. Everybody in America and the nations, United Nations. The United Nations is located in the nation of the United States in the city of New York. God's going to take all of New York, the five boroughs out because of abortion. He tells us why he's going to do it. Innocent blood, innocent blood, innocent blood. It's a horror to him. And you know what? He's going to watch 
3,500 horrors tomorrow. He already saw 3,500 more today, and he'll see them tomorrow too. And they'll be just as horrifying to him as the first one he saw in the land of the Canaanites. As he saw with the Druids. As he saw with the offering unto Molech, Solomon. It's just as fresh, and he said, I will remember. And they will weep over the burning which Jehovah has kindled. He's going to set this place on fire. Light it up, Lord. Destroy them all. Kill them all. Psalm 69, 3. Oh, I'm so weary from my crying. My throat is dried. My eyes failed. I wait for my God. That's our Lord who's crying. That's our Lord whose throat is dry. That's our Lord who's grieved. That's our Lord who's terrified just from this horror. He's, he's horrified from this horror. And you and I should be. We're the body of Christ. So this should be not only the Lord's cry, it should be our cry. Oh, I'm so weary for crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait on my God over the sin. Not just abortion, but all sinfulness, the sinful pride, homosexuality. He's going to destroy us. He kept mentioning Sodom, right? Carlos says, will parents and children have the same relationship in heaven that we do on earth? No, because there's no marrying or giving in marriage. At that point, Jesus is our and theirs. Everybody who's died in the last 2,000 years is the bride of Christ, even the babies. Okay? They're the bride of Christ. God the Father is our Father, our eternal Father. Okay? And that's our relationship. We have relationships on earth that point us. Th these are types of the real. The real is God's relationship with us through Jesus Christ. The type is what we're experiencing on this short-lived earth. Okay? And we got to make sure that's always straight in our head. The earth is the type. The heavenly, the spiritual is the real. Those are all pictures of the real and our relationships. There's not going to be marrying or giving in marriage, no male, female in heaven. Okay. Our relationship is with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Spirit and each other as one body, one new man. Amen. Does that help, Carlos? Uh, let's read the translation again. This is the translation from the Bible Code of February 8th, 2019. The abortion. They died in me. They slept in me. Jehovah is grieving. He will not forget. Iniquity was financed to do all this great evil for abortion. And this shall be a sign unto you from the Lord, Jesus. He will pay back with fire to the nations, to the USA, for the abortions of our children. And they will weep over the burning which Jehovah has kindled. Carlos says, so if our kids and minors are saved, then they will get their own mansions as well. Every, every individual will. We are individuals as one man. Amen. Now, God will have some sort of special something going on there. I know he will. He's so merciful. He's so merciful in all our, in all our ways. Uh, his ways are past finding out. He's going to blow our mind with what he has prepared for us, including this whole situation with fathers and children and all that jazz. But remember, God has zero grandchildren. Everybody who gets saved becomes his child. We are the sons of God. Okay? All right, amen. We are the sons of God. Every individual is the son of God. Jesus is the only begotten son, and because of the only begotten son and his death, burial, and resurrection, and our belief in that, we get to become the sons of God, the adopted sons of God, whereby we can cry, Papa, Daddy, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, let's look at another one. February 12, the abortion of the living innocent one was hidden. Man, God's got us on a subject tonight, doesn't he? Hallelujah. This is February 12, 2019. The lost world laughs and scoffs at the word of God. This is Sean's commentary. They, they laugh and scoff at the word of God, even at this abomination of abortion. The world cheers in the streets. Our God is a God of grace and love. Hallelujah. But he is also a God of wrath and righteous judgment. Swift destruction is coming to the rebellious nations that have no fear of God. 
every nation on earth, including Israel. Final says, this one is not in the book. Please consider adding it too. Amen. Amen. These are, these are awesome. This has been quite a night. This is God's heart, guys. Will you please embrace God's heart? At Cush started out the night with a great question about the whole fear and trembling thing. This is all part of it. This is all part of it. Abortion should make you tremble. Abortion should cause you to stop and be horrified along with God. And you should look over and see God in such grief, such terrible grief over the slaughter of his children. Imagine if you saw your children being slaughtered. All the babies are God's, right? We just talked about that. And they're all his babies. They've killed my babies. They were in the womb. Where's the, where'd the fetus go? I, God gives life. He put the fetus there. Who took it out? Does everybody track in this? Oh, follow God with fear and trembling. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow him. And you'll have every reward that God intended for you to have. Why don't you pray and say, Lord, I want to have every reward that you intended me for have to have. I, I don't want to miss anything. Please have me follow you with discernment, with sobriety, with a holy heart, with a holy hush, a holy reverence and fear of you, with fear and trembling. Lord, cause me to walk in your ways. And may I finish this race, life, exactly how you wanted me to, Lord. May I please you. May I give you that gift. He, he would love to hear you pray that and mean it. The lost world laughs and scoffs at the word of God and even at the abomination of abortion. The world cheers in the streets. Our God is a God of grace and love, but he is also a God of wrath and righteous judgment. Swift destruction is coming to the rebellious nations that have no fear of God. Proverbs 6, 16 and 17. Again, these six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven, are an abomination unto him. A proud look, people have that toward the Bible code. A lying tongue, people have that toward the Bible code. Hands that shed innocent blood, everybody whose character assassinated, Sean, myself, you guys who share the, share the stuff, who share it, got blood on their hands. A heart that devises wicked imaginations against the Bible code. Feet that are swift and running to mischief against the Bible codes. Mocking it, laughing it, making fun, flushing it. A false witness that speaketh lies about the Bible code. And he that sows discord among the brethren about the Bible code. Begins with his word. And when you do this to his word, you're going to end up killing his babies. That's the next step. When you don't care about the spiritual things and things that are Godward and you don't have a right communication with him Godwardly, vertically, you're going to start killing his kids. And then you're going to have uh, those seven things pouring over into the physical world. If they exist in the spiritual world, your relationship with God, they're going to happen in the physical world. These six things that the Lord hate concerning abortion. A proud look. A lying tongue, pride, you know, that's homosexual too. Hands that shed innocent blood. And there he's got that in all capitals here. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. How can we extract the money from these people and have them pay for their own abortions, which will be human sacrifices for us, which will empower our ritual? How can we? That's a wicked imagination, folks. And that's what they've done. And that's what they're doing. And how, how, how can we make more profit off of these abortions? Money, 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 mammon, mammon, mammon. And then the blood gate. Satan opens the blood gate with these kills, with these innocent blood shedding kills. The blood gate opens and that brings in demons to our realm. That's all this has been about. And that's what the Project Paperclip folks taught us. That's what Vril and the demons taught them. Over there in Europe, then they made their way over here. Not just here, but Russia also. Russia got half of them. We got half of them. They're all on the same team. Versus the nations. People who want to be nationalist. Burning, burning in the street and rioting in the streets. And they're going against the one world folks. Who at this moment is God's puppets. He told us in the scripture, it's all going one world. God hates all this stuff, man. Heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that swift in running to mischief, false witnesses that speak lies, and he that sows discord among the brethren. That happened in my Bible study. Ten left at once. Fourteen left at once. 
15 has now left discord among the brethren. Talk, nah, 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 nah. They're speaking against God and God hates it. Because who's a brethren? His children. Brethren, now are we the sons of God? You don't go so in discord among God's children. Make sure the devil doesn't allow that to take place in your heart because it starts vertically before it goes horizontally. Start spiritually before it goes at the human level. Take care of your spiritual things first and it won't make its way here. You'll please God, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and obey him. Deuteronomy 29, 1. So shall thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you. This is innocent blood. Step, step away, guys. Step away. This code is all from Deuteronomy. Amen. Only found in the book of Deuteronomy, guys. And just several chapters, ain't it, Vondo? Yeah. What is the skip? 586 negative from the bottom up. It says what? The abortion of the living innocent one was hidden. Let's see what the code says. What is the word from heaven? God's word. The abortion of the living innocent one was hidden. An evil thing. For that is an abomination to the Lord your God. The iniquity, the injustice, is the abomination of the nations. This particular iniquity and injustice of killing poor innocent little babies. Shedding their blood so that demons can enter. Slaughter for the ritual. And Satan just hates babies who are made in the image of God. He hates creation and he hates procreation. And he hates the face of a baby the most of all because they are most innocent. And that's what you and I are going to become in our glorified bodies. The iniquity, this particular iniquity of abortion injustice is the abomination of the nations. And it threatened woe. That's a curse. The science of the death is a holocaust for the money. The science of the children continues to the father, a holocaust. It's a holocaust to him. Sean says, sounds like you had 22, including yourself, brother. 22 is light. They are all walked away from the light. Amen. Hallelujah, man. Our Bible study he's referring to. They all walked away from the light. 22 is light. is revelation. The book of Revelation is the light of the future, the light of the tribulation, the light of the millennium, the light of the church age. That's what the book of Revelation is, 22, the light, the light, the truth. And they all walked away from the light. Amen, bro. The lamb struck with calamity allowed the destruction of the nations. It's time. Guys, we're at the door. All this is describing New York City first. And it's going to make its way around the world because the United Nations is doing this too. They're the ones taking your money and dispersing it, all the death machines around the world. And God's coming for you next. You, if you won't believe now, watch what happens to New York City and the United States. This is because of the innocent blood, the abortion, and the pride of homosexuality. And he's coming for you next. We really much from the depths of our heart encourage you to be saved now and miss all that you're not just going to get saved you're going to be the bride of christ <laughs> what a special 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 privilege if you'll just believe come out of the world come out of sin and believe just believe in the finished work of jesus christ that he has already taken care of your sin and he'll infuse his righteousness into you and let it let it happen let's read this code interpretation again this is the code from February 12th, 2019, God talking four years ago, guys, four years ago, February, March, April, and now May and three months ago. Okay. Four years and three months ago, God has been hollering, screaming, grieving, hoping and praying that you will read his Bible code and believe what he's saying and see his heart in the middle of this whole thing, his fingerprint, his light. Code interpretation, God's word. The abortion of the living innocent, one was hidden. It's an evil thing. For that is the abomination to the Lord your God. The iniquity, this injustice, is the abomination of the nations. And it threatened, whoa. The science of the death of, is the Holocaust for, for the money. 
The science of the children continues to the father, a holocaust. To the father, this is a holocaust. Please let this be a holocaust to you. The lamb then, which is about to happen. We've already come through everything we've read up to this point has been in the past and present. And we're about to hit the future moment, which will become the present when the lamb strikes with calamity allowing the destruction of all the nations. Praise God, guys. I love you. We can call it a night right there. That's some powerful Bible codes for the evening. Internalize these things. Pray. Humble yourself before the Lord and say, Lord, may my heart be your heart. May I be a woman, a man after your own heart. Don't you thank him for taking care, wiping out all your sin debt, paying for it in full? Hallelujah. And now here we are. Here we are, made the righteousness of Jesus Christ in us. He's infused us with his righteousness. He's placed on us a robe of righteousness. Those of us that have believed, those of us that are believers and Christians, true, true sons of God, true brethren, the true body of Christ Jesus, righteousness, 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 and he remembereth our sin no more. Aren't you thankful for that personally, individual? Aren't we thankful for that as a body, church? Amen. Praise God. Thank God for Sean and his faithfulness over the years. That was four years ago and three months, guys. God's heart hadn't changed a bit. And we're four years and three months closer to the Lamb doing his thing, igniting this place. Bono says, guys, gals, please get the Bible codes unsealed. Read through the codes, familiarize yourself, and Sean's going to include these. He's about to upload some more, guys. He's working on some more about this. So praise God. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome, Catherine. Amen. Let's pray, guys. Jesus, we are so grateful for your word and for your getting your heart to us. We are so sorry you've grieved this long. We're so sorry you've had to see all of this wickedness in the dark, which you said is not in the dark. It's made known. Thank you for making it known to us and making known to us the way you feel about it and what's the next step. Thank you for the rapture for us and thank you for the destruction of them. Destroy them, Lord. Destroy them in horror. Destroy them in terror. Destroy them in such a way they'll never forget it, those that live through it. That they'll be saved. They'll fast track themselves unto belief. They will hear, get this message, get these Bible codes that we preach and that Sean has presented in this book, get it to them in front of their faces immediately upon this happening. Use Sean as he comes back to, to minister to these people in the United States and Canada who are suddenly impacted, who are, had suddenly been destroyed 10 days earlier or whenever it was. And just uh, thank you for him. We, we, we just acknowledge all this and faith is what we're doing. We know your will to be done. We thank you for calling him. We thank you for sharing all of your heart with us in these codes. I pray for everybody who's part of this gang that you will bless us, Lord, that we will walk faithfully with you. We will walk honestly with you. We'll walk as in the day and not the night. We'll have no secrets. Our vertical will be right with you. Keep our vertical straight so our horizontal can be straight always while we're dealing with mankind around us. And may we always have your heart with the right motivations, the right intentions, and the, the desire to please you and to focus on you and to chase you and to seek you desperately with all of our hearts. We know the reward is great in that. The reward is you. You are such a blessing. And we are so thankful you've allowed us to approach you through the blood of the lamb and to understand this blessing and to embrace you, to be your friend. Thank you for being our friend. And may everybody, all of us, get our sanctification right, get it squared away, and walk with you in holiness and wholeness. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. I love you guys, man. God bless you. And by his grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Amen.